viewers, welcome to our 12th session of Ask Your Aviator. Today's session is on aeronautical search and rescue. We are going to discuss uh, uh, aspects of aeronautical search and rescue. My name is Alfred Wagura. I'm a Chief Air Traffic Control Officer, search and rescue. Today I'm joined by an officer from the Kenya Defense Forces. My name is uh, Major Mwoki Isaac from the Kenya Air Force. I'm a helicopter pilot and uh, currently deployed as the officer in charge of number 755 helicopter squadron. I'm also a trained uh, and qualified search and rescue mission coordinator. Thank you very much for having me. Very well. Welcome, Bejamuoki, to Kenya Civil Aviation Authority. Yes, thank you. Let's go. In. Search and rescue is a service that uh, the state provides when an aircraft has either is lost or has crashed, or there is reasonable uh, certainty that the aircraft is having some difficulty. And this service is done with an objective to ensure that the people on board that aircraft will be rescued within the shortest time possible and delivered to a place of safety. That place could be a hospital for those who are injured, or those who are not injured, they are uh, maybe uh, taken to the destination they were heading to, and uh, also they are removed from where the distress is. This service is a responsibility of the state. The state has committed itself to the international community that should there be an incident that requires people to be helped, that they are helped within the shortest time possible. Therefore, the service is provided to all people who may need it. Aeronautical search and rescue is done at the, it's coordinated by the Rescue Coordination Center. Kenya Civil Aviation Authority coordinates the aviation search and rescue on behalf of the state. The Rescue Coordination Center starts by mobilizing the state and non-state volunteer agencies that can respond to that incident within the shortest time possible. There are several agencies that uh, respond or that we work very closely. Among the agencies, we have uh, primary agencies that we can talk about. Those will include one, the National Police Service. Uh, two, we'd have the Kenya Defense Forces. Three, the Kenya Wildlife Service. Four, the Kenya Forestry. Five, we have the National Disaster Operations uh, Center. We have the National Disaster Management Authority and several other government agencies. They may not be the most appropriate and you have other agencies that we call non-state agencies. Uh, the Kenya Red Cross, uh, we have the AMREF, the Flying Doctors. We have the operators, independent operators who may be in the best position to attend to the situation uh, the fastest possible. We have the mountain, mountain people and volunteers who may be there. So it is an all of, uh, you know, state's response to an incident using the best possible asset that is, you know, uh, the fastest to the location. When we talk about uh, search and rescue, it has two aspects. The first aspect is locating where an incident has happened. It is not obvious that uh, when an incident happens, especially in aviation terms, that it is known automatically this is where the incident has happened. So we start by searching. That's why it is search and rescue. Once you have located, then you get down to the rescue. And once the rescue has happened, then the service has been delivered. And we had it over to other agencies that would be now, you know, take over the investigation of uh, the, the what happened uh, to, the, to cause the incident. It's uh, quite something. All incidences are, you know, unique in nature. 
some may happen and uh, such could take maybe a few minutes, a few hours, some end up taking days or even weeks. Such of a lost aircraft or vessel uh, is undertaken using various means. We will utilize all the assets uh, within the state and depending on the various circumstances, uh, the routing, and the circumstances that led to what is called a missing aircraft or a lost aircraft. Therefore, the Rescue Coordination Center will select or will plan for the most appropriate means of searching so that we can be able to locate. And when we say the most appropriate means, we will probably choose between airborne, that is using an aircraft that could be a fixed wing uh, aeroplane or a helicopter, to search within an area, which is a very preferred method because it covers a very wide area and is also very fast. And as, we, as a country and as a world has evolved, search is also being undertaken using uh, also the unmanned aerial vehicles or what is called the, the UAVs. Uh, so there is a wide variety of airborne assets. The other way of uh, undertaking a search is using ground assets. Ground assets will involve vehicles, personnel who would be on ground, uh, you know, searching on foot. For example, some areas is very densely uh, forested areas. You may not utilize an airborne or an aircraft to search because they will not be able to see below the canopy uh, what could be there. So people on ground come in hard, the scouts, the, 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 the mountain rangers. In uh, marine time cases, in water, then we have the divers. The divers can search for an aircraft that is missing and is lost in water so that they can be able to locate. And also aircraft also come in handy because they will be able also to cover a wide area if it's in the sea and uh, the boats, the, all the assets that would be available for that case will be utilized. How does the Rescue Coordination Center do this? We have as a KCA and the coordinating uh, agency for search and rescue in aeronautical or aviation purposes, KCA uh, working together with stakeholders came up with three categories what we call clusters of agencies. Those agencies have been clustered such that immediately the rescue coordination center becomes aware that there is an incident that requires their service. Those agencies are notified and told to be on the alert so that once a such plan has been developed, that is a plan of how it will be undertaken, then the best unit will be tasked. They will be ready by the time that happens. And this happens pretty quickly because it's already understood that uh, the service that is required will save lives. Therefore, once they are notified, then after that they will, be, they will have their assets ready and then uh, you will let the agency that has been tasked to take that. In most cases, we task uh, the primary agencies of which the most equipped is the, our Kenya Defense Forces and they are able to undertake that uh, operation. Major Muwaki will be able to take us through how they undertake the search from an agency perspective, from the, from the Kenya Air Force perspective. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Wagura. Then uh, a basic question that anyone would ask is uh, how does uh, Kenya Defense Forces, or military for that matter, come in in uh, civil or aeronautical search and rescue? And uh, Kenya being a contracting state to the uh, Chicago Convention, which forms 
uh, ECAO, the regulating and uh, promoting body for civil aviation, uh, commits itself as a state to provide any form of assistance to any civil aircraft in distress. Yeah. And uh, KDF is a state agency. So KDF, therefore, is mandated to provide uh, such and rescue functions to any aircraft in distress within the Kenyan airspace. So KDF has three services. That is the Kenya Army, Kenya Air Force, and the Kenya Navy, who have uh, various and varied uh, capabilities and uh, roles. The Kenya Defense Forces is able, first of all, uh, once we have a confirmed uh, crash site, to provide security for the personnel and the aircraft that has crashed. In case we have an aircraft that is in distress, the, the Kenya Air Force, which forms part of the KDF, is able to provide a, or to, to shepherd that aircraft that is escorting that aircraft to safety. You might find a, a case whereby uh, an aircraft is lost uh, and may need escorting to, to an airport or at a nearby place where uh, it can land. The Kenya Air Force uh, has air traffic control services and Kenya Air Force is uh, in constant liaison with all civil airports and if called upon is able to provide uh, air traffic uh, control services. As uh, a well-equipped uh, government agency, the KDF is normally called upon when there is need for uh, aeronautical search and rescue. And uh, we normally deploy uh, the required asset, be it air asset or uh, ground personnel to ensure that we bring back the personnel who are involved in an uh, air accident back to safety. A case in point is uh, the use of helicopters for search and rescue. We have uh, air assets that is helicopters and personnel who are well trained to undertake uh, aeronautical search and rescue. The normal procedure is that uh, the Rescue Coordination Center, located at Jomo Kenyatta International Airport, uh, selects the appropriate agency that will undertake the search and rescue. And that call is placed at uh, or to DOD Operation Center or Kenya Air Force. Uh, air operations center and when that call comes in the Kenya Air Force or DOD uh, operations center will give that task to the operators who are capable of uh, proceeding to contact the search and rescue mission. The whole essence of search and rescue is to save life so expediency is, of, is a very key factor when uh, contacting uh, search and rescue. As operators, once we get that call, we move with speed to ensure that we save life as much as practicable. Also, KDF is equipped with medical personnel. So when we receive a task for search and rescue, we make sure that when the aircraft is leaving base to go conduct the search and rescue mission, as adequate personnel, who are able to give first aid one, once we locate survivors from the, from the aircraft crash that has crashed. As Mr. Wagura said, the first part of a search and rescue mission is to search, is to locate the aircraft that has, has had an incident. And there are various ways to 
conduct the search. But with the recent advancement in technology uh, and having uh, a requirement of every uh, passenger aircraft to be fitted with an emergency locator transmitter, we are able to get uh, the exact coordinates of a probable uh, cr uh, crash area. So that makes the search part of the search and rescue mission easier for the operator. So once you have the, the exact GPS coordinates of the, of the probable crash area, and I'll say probable because uh, it comes in two ways. It's either confirmed or is, is not confirmed. It's a probable general area. Once we get those coordinates, it's easier because just fly to, the, to, the, to that area and try to locate the, the, the crash site. Now, in the other, in the other a case is where you don't get the coordinates of the probable uh, crash area. So now there are various uh, search patterns which are internationally uh, recognized that we employ. There's a parallel search, there's a creeping line. So you employ those search patterns uh, and you try to locate the crash site. Now once you locate the crash site, you'll move into the, 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 the site and determine the state of the passengers. Uh, because as I said, search and rescue is all about saving lives and protecting a property. But the most important is saving lives. And that's why I said when we move, we move with medical personnel who are capable of giving first aid to the survivors of the crash. So once we, we, we arrive at the site, the first thing is to give first aid to the survivors of the crash. And uh, thereafter, to secure the, the site because you need the investigators to find uh, an area which is not compromised. Sometimes you've, you might find a crash, a crash which is occurring in a safe or in, or in a secure area. So Kenya Army will come in handy in terms of uh, securing and pacifying that area uh, for the other rescuers to come in True. to contact search and rescue. The Kenya Air Force is uh, equipped with various air assets with different capabilities, both manned aircraft and unmanned aircraft, which uh, can be used to successfully conduct search and rescue. There is also the Kenya Navy. The Kenya Navy has uh, various uh, capabilities and equipment which can help uh, to conduct search and rescue in maritime environment. It is equipped with, uh, with uh, ships and speedboats, as well as personnel who are trained in uh, amphibious operations and who are able to do uh, deep water diving to help in uh, search and rescue.